Hey, what's up you guys? It's Dorothy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter 21 of The Lake by Natasha Preston. Um, I hope that you guys are ready for this chapter, so let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, I suggest clicking off of the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 21. In the morning, we're in the lake. The sun shines brightly through a thin smattering of fluffy clouds and he thinks it's a good idea to keep the campers minds off the person in the woods by switching our hike today with the water sports that were scheduled for later in the week my fingertips graze the lake surface of the water i know the water is smooth but I, all i feel is the rough texture of the carved initials lillian has been in our room i'm up i'm in up to my knees watching my and cora's group swim the length of the lake on the other side of the lake, four merged groups of boys are having a kayak racing mini tournament. Andy said the winners will get extra s'mores, but we all know he'll let everyone have extra. The inflatable water course is coming out soon. Some of the guys are setting it up. The atmosphere is somewhere somewhat tense. The staff have information that the campers don't, and it's making us slightly paranoid. Well, it's certainly making me paranoid. If I had a dollar for everyone I witnessed looking at the forest, I could buy a beach house in Malibu. Keep going, girls. You're doing great, I call as they swim back to me. The trained instructors and lifeguards watch closely and occasionally tell one of the girls how to improve their stroke. Bless some of them still look like they're drowning. Did you manage to speak to Rebecca Court? asks, staring ahead at the girls, or maybe she's just... She's staring beyond them into the trees. Kayla mentioned at breakfast that you were worried about her last night. Not yet. She got up late. She seems okay now, though, cheery, cheering her girls on in the race. I say, blinking my heavy eyelids. I'm tired after last night, and I can barely focus on anything. I remember how we, how weird Rebecca was at the arcade and the possible sighting of Lillian outside. Good, Cora says. Is it always like this? Not that someone's watching thing, but are there always issues from coming from all directions she laughs pretty much how are you handling it it's slightly exhausting but i'm much better at helping other people with their problems than i am with my own you can talk about yours with me if you want thanks i'll keep that in mind yeah no i don't think i'll be doing that talking to kayla right now feels weird and we share everything how would she react to the initials on the wall not great i shiver at the thought of lillian creeping up onto my bed and carving those letters was she snarling as she dug into the wood did she pretend she was cutting into me it's good to talk as Maycora tells me i clench my jaw i agree i'm fine for now you're a fixer sorry laughing she turns to me you fix things for other people you're good at it unfortunately that usually ends with neglecting yourself uh really we're going there i can't have her worrying about me or telling anyone that she had that she has Esme concerns. I overthink, I tell her. So right now I'm convinced that something bad is going on, like more than pranks. Ah, uh, my sister is just the same. If I don't check in, she thinks I've drowned in the lake or something. That sounds like me. You care, that's not a bad thing. And bad stuff does happen at camps. What? Accidents, I mean. We're doing games and sports in the water and in the woods, and that brings more dangers. I gulp. Has anything really bad happened here? We've had a few near misses. Last year, a kid got into trouble in the water and almost drowned. That's why we test their swimming ability before they get in and have the waist-high rule to non-swimmers. Another camp tripped over, Tamber tripped over a branch when she wasn't looking and broke her ankle. I'm looking for something more sinister. Besides, I don't think a camper is behind what's going on. Lillian, obviously. Hello. You have her initials carved into your wall? There's a shoe. Gross, Ava shouts. Cora and I look up. Ava drops the shoe and she's... That she's holding back into the water. She and Addison back up. What? I ask, wading over to her. The water hits my shorts. A shoe? Oh, she mutters and bends down, keeping her head above water as she reaches into the water. Here. I take the tennis shoe, and that was probably white once, but is now green. Wonderful. You think someone threw it in? Ava asks. I nod. Yep. Addison's eyes widen. I would be so mad if someone threw mine into the lake. Me too, I tell her. Looks like it's been here a while, though, so it probably was from years ago. The shoe is slimy. I'll chuck this. You two go catch up with the others. You both, you're both, you both doing so well. Things as may, they chime in unison. They dive into the water, belly first. I manage to turn before I get a full face of water. Holding the shoe by the heel with two fingers, I take it out of the lake and dump it in the trash. And he shakes his head. I once found a t-shirt and a hairbrush in the lake. I guess it's not one big fa happy family all the time, I say. We have our fair share of arguments among the campers, he confirms. It usually happens week three when they really feel like their family. A week of peace left. Enjoy it while it lasts, Annie replies. Have the cops got in contact yet? 
Not yet. I called last night and they said they would keep me informed. I'll let you all know when I hear from them. No one has noticed anything so far today. The forest seems quiet, I say. Since I've been out here this morning, not once has the hair on the back of my neck stood up. Let's hope it stays that way. The last thing the camp needs is a reputation for having a stalker looking, lurking around. We're the, we're the best youth camp in the area and I intend to keep it that way. Are you worried? His red eyebrows meet in the middle. No, are you, Esme? Yes, I'm worried. I'm scared for the campers. I'm scared for Kayla and I'm scared for myself. Mostly, though, I feel guilty. If I weren't here, would any of this be happening? A little. He can tell that I am, so lying isn't going to help me. I don't want the campers to be frightened. It's okay to worry. In fact, it's normal. This isn't the first time I've had to deal with public wandering, the public wandering onto the camp land. It just takes a conversation. Plus, we have a clear cleaning staff, cooks, and delivery people coming and going. The campers rarely notice who's supposed to be here or not. Isn't that more dangerous if the campers assume everyone here is a part of the camp? They could trust any someone they shouldn't. Don't look so concerned, Annie says. It's really fine. You'll come to realize that in time, especially if you come back next year. There are things that are a part of being a counselor that the campers have no clue about. He smiles. I bet there were people closer to camp than you think when you were last year. I know there were. That is the end of chapter 21. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.